Hello, I'm Laurel House. I'm a celebrity dating coach and breakup expert. And I have some advice on how to get over an ex. A few things that might actually be surprising. So there are really two rules of thought when it comes to the most common ways to get over someone. So the first is you get over someone by getting under someone else. And while, yeah, that's nice in the moment and it's good to feel sexy and desired and to realize your value again, the problem is that your heart is still hurting and with your ex or completely just emotionally shut off. So when you get under someone else, well, when that someone else leaves your house or you leave theirs, oftentimes you feel even worse. In the moment, it was exciting. And then it feels like you're lonelier and more alone than you felt before you were with this new fun fling of a person. People think, well, I'll just become, I'll just be their friend. And then I can still have them in my life and, and the feelings will fade away and I'll go from wanting to make out with them to just wanting to sit and have coffee totally platonically. Yeah, that is not going to happen unless you really weren't emotionally invested in it in the first place. And if you really weren't emotionally invested, then fine, be friends. Maybe that's what you really were, except you also had sex or you also made out. Bad idea. Okay, so here are six possibly surprising things that you actually should do to get over your ex. And the first is intellectualize it. So intellectualize it is basically becoming a cold-hearted bitch in some ways or a cold-hearted asshole because you're taking the relationship out of your heart and moving it into your head. So you're able to stop feeling and start thinking. Be emotionally cold. Get really clear on why that relationship ended. In what ways was it not only not serving you, but hurting you? In what ways were they not able to satisfy your needs? In what ways were you not able to satisfy their needs? Needs, we're talking about feeling safe, sexy, and seen, conversation, communication, feeling like a partner, like a priority, respecting, admiring, adoring them, um, having similar curiosity and passion about life, similar core values, same beliefs on how to live, raise children, move forward. Are you guys aligned there? Well, probably not because it ended. Trust, uh, integrity. If someone cheated, well, the trust and integrity out the window. So needs. What needs were not being satisfied? Don't sit and fixate on the romance and the fantasy of the relationship. That's not reality. Reality is about the needs. What needs were not being satisfied? If your needs were not being satisfied, you guys were not a fit. It doesn't matter how emotional you were about it, you guys were not a fit. Number two, get a new mattress. You might think that you're sleeping alone every night, but you're actually not. All of the exes who have slept on uh, sat and had deep emotional conversation with you on, even just had nice kisses on that mattress, they're still there in some capacity. And it might just be energetically that they are still there. So you need to clear away that old clutter that is stuck in the mattress. At least get new sheets. If you don't want to get new sheets, at least get new underwear. Like, just get clear in that department. Okay, number three, delete all photos from your phone of your ex. All of them. Delete all of them. Keep five, but not on your phone. You're going to email those to yourself and then put them on a jump drive. That jump drive is going to house all of the photos of all of your exes. And you're going to hide that jump drive so it's not easily accessible. The reason why you're doing this is because... When you are searching through your old photos because you need to find something or in a moment of loneliness or insecurity or whatever it is, nostalgia, and you look back and you see this photo of your ex and it brings you back to that moment when you were so happy because we usually only take photos in moments when we're so happy. So it takes you back to this moment when you were so happy with your ex and you, then you want to call them and no, avoid that. Don't torture yourself. Remove that trigger. 
Put five photos, because you don't need 5,000, put five photos on a jump drive and you can access that later. The reason why I'm saying to, to keep it there is because the people we've been with, the experiences that we've had, they have made us who we are. And I, I know a lot of who I am is based on the people who I've dated. They have added to my life. And I don't want to make that go away. I don't want to completely delete them from my history. They exist, so I don't want to delete them. Again, I don't need 5,000 memories of them. Just five photos on the jump drive. Okay, then number four, send a very strategic text to them telling them that you're not going to be in contact with them anymore. So if this is especially if they text you on occasion saying, hey, how are you thinking about you? Then you can send them a text saying, thank you so much for letting me know you were thinking about me. Um, that means a lot. I care so deeply about you. The problem is that every time you contact me, it actually hurts me because I'm still hung up on you. So if you really do care about me that much, please let me go. Please don't contact me again. And if they contact you again, then you respond, this is the last time I'm going to respond to you. Please respect my wishes and don't contact me again. And then you block them. You've told them I'm not going to respond, so now you block them. <laughs> Stop going to the same old spots. Get a new route. You don't want to be triggered by driving down the street and, oh, I used to turn left to go there, or, or what, down that block is where we kissed. No, get a new route. Stop torturing yourself. And number six, unfollow and block them on all social media. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. In fact, unfollow and block their friends and family too. This is not about being immature or catty. This is about protecting yourself. When they are blocked, you can't look at their posts and they can't look at yours because they can't find you and you can't find them. All of a sudden, you both poof, disappear from each other's view. And that's a great thing. It makes it so that whenever you post a video, a photo, or a written post, you aren't able to, in the back of your mind, think, Maybe my ex will see this. Maybe my ex will read this. Maybe my ex will watch this. Because there's no way that they're going to. Getting over an ex is about making the decision to do some of the things that are hard to do. Like sending that text, like blocking them, like getting rid of those photos. Those might be difficult to do. But if you're really, really having a hard time, you have to take those steps because it's time for you to move on. It's time for you to get over them. Because until you do, you're not going to find happiness again. I know right now you might be sitting here thinking like, I'll never be happy again. I'm never going to find someone as great or at all again. Not true. But if you stay totally obsessed with and fixated on and depressed by your ex, you're right. You're not going to move on. So make the decision. Do the hard things so that you can give yourself permission to find someone else. For more information about me, visit my website, laurelhouse.com. I hope to see you again soon.